Hi, this is the second in the series of how to make it in uh, Rhino um, rather than uh, making it in SolidWorks. And in this one, I just want to explain how to navigate the uh, user interface in Rhino. So before I do that, uh, the one thing to understand about Rhino is that it is a non-history based uh, program. So let's just compare SolidWorks with this one to understand that. In SOLIDWORKS, you would make a sketch on a plane and you'd be taken into the sketch environment. Right. And, and you'd enter, you know, um, dimensions and then you'd have to exit the, the sketch environment before you could um, do anything with the sketch, before you could extrude it or revolve it or whatever operation it is you wanted to do. So in SOLIDWORKS, you have a, a viewport, and on the left-hand side, you have a, a history tree or a design tree, and I can go and trace um, every step that I've taken, and I can then go and change um, just using the, you know, you know how to do this. Just using the dimensions, I can go and change what I've done, and it updates. So in the one sense, it's a whole lot less uh, immediate. It's, it's got mediation. There's, there's, in, there's steps in between that you have to take to get to where you want to go. In another sense, it's um, a lot better in terms of making changes because it's fully parametric. So whatever dimensions you put in, you can change just using those dimensions. Rhino, on the other hand, is not parametric in the same way. It has some parametricity. It has this record history button. And if you really want to get clever, you will learn how to use Grasshopper. We're not going to do that for now. Its great strength is its immediacy, as I've said before. In other words, you draw a sketch. The sketch is available immediately um, to do with as you please. Um, and there's no going hopping between screens. Um, the disadvantage, of course, is that if you want to make changes, there's no record of those changes. There is a record of a history of commands up here, this, this uh, panel here, which, okay. <clears throat> and as I said, there's the record history button, which we'll learn how to use. All right, so with that uh, out of the way, um, <clears throat> let me explain just how it works. It's not that difficult. Um, the very top line, well, right at the top, you have a title bar, just telling you what version of Rhino you're using. Um, the second set of the second line here is your usual menus. So file edit and view will be familiar to you in some way or another. Then from then on, we get the the um, the modeling ones, the modeling command. So curve has all kinds of curves in Rhino. A curve is anything from a straight line to a freeform line, all right? So from curves to surfaces, because you need curves. You need sketches in Rhino to do to make uh, anything the same as uh, SolidWorks. Then surfaces, which are two-dimensional, well, not quite two-dimensional, but there are, you know, there are surfaces. That there's not there's nothing to them other than the surface. Sub D is a form of solid, which we'll talk about. A very very nice feature. Solids, which are obviously you know about solids. Um, this is not Rhino's greatest um, asset. It certainly is in the surfaces and in the sub-D. And then meshes are another form of solids, um, which we won't really deal with. And then the rest are just ways to either create drawings or to do things like move, copy, rotate in the transform, transform thing. Analyze, which we'll use. Render, that's to, to be able to render, obviously. And then panels, these last three ones we're not going to deal with. And then the help column. Okay, so that deals with the menu bar. Then you have what is called the, uh, the toolbar group. So this whole group stretching from left to right. You will not have this group here. Um, let's just pull this out. This is my <coughs> uh, V-Ray command. So yours will look much more like this without that, that command. And then, and then near the, the middle, you get the same tools as you get in the menu. So curve tools, curve, surface tools, surface, solid tools, solid, etc. Sub D tools, sub D. So these are um, 
And then as you open one, you'll see a range of graphical devices, icons. Um, and these are all the commands that, which are available under that command. Um, if you go to the standard one, you'll see that in standard, um, these are the major commands that you would find in any program like um, save, print, cut, copy, paste, uh, etc. undo, redo, move. All the ones that you would expect to find in most programs under um, sort of a standard set of commands. And then some additional ones like uh, Grasshopper and then the options button is over here. So that's going to be an important one. Then underneath that is, as I say, is the, uh, the command history. And then underneath the command history, although you might have this in a separate order, you might have your command history and your command bar above the, um, the actual toolbar group. I've got mine underneath. So in the command bar line, is this, that's the same as in, uh, in SolidWorks, it's copy across. That's the same as in the search commands thing. You can type, you know, um, whatever you want in there and you'll get a command. Well, in Rhino, you use this a lot more. So you can type in a command and then you'll get the options in that. So in SolidWorks, if we go back to SolidWorks, if I get into a sketch and I draw a line, right? All the options for that line are on the left hand side here in this um, properties bar. Rhino doesn't work that way. Rhino's um, options are all inside the command line. So for instance, start of line, if I want to do both sides, um, I have to click in that in that bar. Okay. So let's do that again. Let's just delete this. <clears throat> if I say line again, um, I can change the way it starts, whether it's normal, that's, you know, what normal is perpendicular angled, etc. So all of those options are in this command line that you would normally find on the left hand side in SolidWorks. Um, hopefully that, ex that just gives you some idea of how to begin to navigate what goes on. Further to that, the stuff on the left hand side here in this panel, um, this very first one, these are just about all the commands that you, are, you will use other than things like um, Grasshopper or rendering. Um, so these are all the sort of modeling tools that you would use. So you would have a panel here, by the way, most of these have got little triangles under them. If you open them, that expands the group and you can actually drag the group out. So let's say I want to use the circle diameter um, that's how I do it. Um, so I can drag this in and then I can just close it again if I want to. I've created a set of customized uh, toolbars inside tabs, inside a group, which I hope to be able to show you how to access. These are the ones that we're going to use the most. Um, they're replicas of what you'll find over here or over here. So a lot of what you see in Rhino is just replication of those same commands. So for instance, this one here, control point curve, you'll find it over here in my group, control point curve. And you, if you go to curve, you'll go to freeform and control points. Control po should be control point curve, but it's control points. They're all exactly the same command. Right, I hope that covers it. Oh yes, and on the right hand side is another panel um, with your properties in available to you. So for instance, if I have a, like here I've got a point, I can see um, in this properties, the very first one here, I can see what the color is, which I can change. Uh, in fact, let's just draw a line instead and we'll change that. So we can go by layer um so we'll change the color of it um we can give it a name if you want we can say line one not that you would do that with the line but for some other things you would definitely want to name them then you can you can try you can change the line line type um so you can say for instance dash dot there we go all right and other things you can change are the print color so if you wanted to print in cyan it won't show up here but it will show up when you print it and then the print width you can also change here 
So it won't show up here because there's a specific command you have to enter for it to show on screen. You only get fine lines on screen by default. Okay, then beyond that is a layer tab, which we will use a lot of. So layers are very important in, in Grass, I mean, in Rhino, because you can hide things, lock them, group them, or do all sorts of things with the layers. The layers are actually a great feature. <clears throat> SOLIDWORKS has them, but you don't, they don't feature much. Then under materials, this is for when you want to render, you can create your own materials. This is the render button where you can control how the rendering is going to happen. All sorts of things with different kinds of uh, lighting, backgrounds, you name it. And then this is to do with uh, your actual setting. So for instance, in each of these viewports, there are four viewports, one, two, three, four, which is a standard viewport arrangement. Um, if you click on the, on the tab at the top, you'll get a, a whole lot of commands, further commands for what you want the viewport to do. So you can set the view here to whatever it is that you want. Let's say you want this to be the back view. You can do that, or I can go back to uh, perspective. Um, I'm not going to go through all of them, but here are all the kinds of um, sort of rendering or presentation styles that you have available to you. At the moment, this is in shaded, which means that when I actually create a panel, that is shaded. But if I go to wireframe, it'll be in wireframe. All right, so that's about the sum of it. I think that's enough for you to get started because from here we will actually start modeling. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.